The Senate of Nigeria has rejected the motion seeking a political solution to free the leader of the proscribed indigenous peoples of Biafra, Aibab, Namdi Kanu from detention at the Department of State Service, DDS. It also reached a resolution calling for the extradition of a self-acclaimed leader of the separatist group, Simon Ekpa, from his base in Finland to face charges for his sit-at-home calls and inciting trouble in Nigeria's southeast. Our National Assembly correspondent Omo Bazwai has more on this. Simon Epa, a self styled leader of separatist group Indigenous People of Biafra, has been passing several orders from his base in Finland to his followers, establishing a strict sit at home order in Nigeria's southern states. In the absence of Namdi Kanu, the IPOP leader, his protege Simon Epa, has since 2021 tormented citizens in the region, applying terrorist tactics to force them to lock up their shops and businesses, crippling commercial activities in the region. On Wednesday, the activities of EPA and his gang finally caught the attention of the Senate, following a motion by Imo West Senator Osita Isinazo. Isinazo's motion was co-sponsored by all other 14 senators from the Southeast inviting Nigeria's federal might to end the rascality of Simon Epa and his band of outlaws in the region. The Senate is aware that thousands of innocent lives have been lost since this action of sit at home in the Southeast started. And properties worth over a trillion have been destroyed, which has resulted in investors leaving the region. 2023. Efforts by the governors of the five southeastern states have achieved little to no end in the terror activities of Eba and his men. Those who dare to disobey his sit-at-home order often pay dearly for it, and senators are angry about the development. The Senate condemned the situation in the southeast and called for the extradition of Eba from his base in Finland it, however, rejected a prayer by the Southeast Senators calling for a political solution to release IPOP leader Namdi Kanu from DSS detention, saying it is offensive to his rules and a matter that is already in court. What happens is this. A few miscreants, and I use the word advisedly, come out shoot and kill one or two people and run away and video it and send across the whole of the southeast and everybody is now scared kano was extradited from kenya in 2021 after he jumped bail in nigeria alleging threats to his life by nigerian security forces on october 2022 justice Binta yako of the federal high court struck out eight out of the 15 counts charged earlier brought against Kanu by the Nigerian government. The appellate court ordered his release on account of his unlawful extradition from Kenya to Nigeria to face terrorism charges. But the Supreme Court obtained the decision of the Federal High Court, leaving Kanu in detention since then. An additional prayer by Senator Ifan Uba asking the Senate to prevail on the federal government to obey the court orders on Kanu was also rejected without a single senator seconding it. The Senate, however, observed a many silence in honor of those unjustly killed for not adhering to the citadel order by Simon Epa and his gang. Omo Bazwai, Arise News. Well, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio by Eze Chikam Nayo, who is a constitutional lawyer and a former commissioner for information and strategy in Abia State. Also, Professor Charles Wakeku, who is the secretary of the Igbo Elders Consultative Forum. Gentlemen, good to see you. Not too good a story we're getting from Nigeria South. So we've had this conversation. Uh, perhaps uh, let's start uh, by speaking to uh, Eze. You've seen some of your uh, uh, colleagues and friends in the National Assembly asking for a solution. First, give us a sense of what exactly is happening in Nigeria's southeast. Uh, you're from Abia State. Uh, how is it going with the people in terms of sit at home and the resurgence of uh, these uh, uh, gun wielding men? 
thank you. And uh, the truth quickly is that um, these are very delicate times to have, not just in the Southeast, but in Nigeria. And this time is a time for statesmanship, not a time for legalism. Because uh, I observed the motions in the Senate and I saw how uh, uh, some of the people say because of our rules, we were not going to go in line with political solution. And as uh, somebody who has studied widely, you know, issues of terrorism and issues of uh, conflicts across the globe, and as a constitutional lawyer, I would say that there is no way anywhere in the world you will eventually arrive at a solution to any conflict without some form of political solution to it. Because at the end of the day, it will be on the table. And uh, secondly, uh, before now, Abia State, where I come from, has been an oasis of peace and security in the Southeast. The last diaspora meeting held in Abia State, Nigerian Union of Journalists Conference held in Abia State two years ago. And for eight years, check your records, under Governor Kizibas, there was no single incident of either IPOB or unrest in the Southeast. So you have to look at what was it that Abia, under Governor Okizibazu, did well. I think every Nigerian is looking for a solution. I'll come back to you on that. This is certainly, we'll have to look at uh, what recipe you had to the extent that people had a fantastic one for eight years. Uh, uh, Professor Wakeku, uh, one of the few things people have been asking is the solutions that the Igbo Elders Forum have, because I'll come back to the political aspect yeah, with uh, yes, yes. Uh, Yachikam but what are the elders doing to ensure that everyone can go about uh, their business? Well, I want to thank you, and um, by extension, I want to thank uh, the Arise management for giving us this wonderful opportunity. As a matter of fact, uh, let me begin with the motion sponsored by some senators from Southeast. Yeah. Okay, first, I want to commend them, at least for them to come up for once to say, look, let Namdekal be released. But I want to say this, they should go beyond that because I'm not a lawyer, but I know that motion has no force of law. Although the senators rejected it. I wanted to hear what they suggest as an alternative. And I am disappointed that the senators could do uh, some courage to advise the presidency to release Mr. Namde Kahlo. As a matter of fact, yes, as read here, you know, first Namde Kahlo was uh, charged before an Abuja, Fed, uh, Federal High Court Abuja, presided over by uh, Justice uh, Bin Tanyako. And then they caught the charging of eight of the 15 charges. And then he appealed. At the appeal court, unanimously, three judges, they discharged him of the remaining seven charges. And said so, that he should be released. And instead of uh, releasing the Nam Dekalu, federal government appealed. But you also remember that in this country, when ASU, federal government went to court against ASU, we went to industrial, uh, National Industrial Court. National Industrial Court said that ASU should first, uh, you know, observe this thing. Federal government insisted that ASU should first obey the court order before appealing. And we are asking federal government, why in the case of Nam de Carlo, why have you failed to obey court order before appealing? And in any way, you say you've appealed to the Supreme Court, what are the charges against Nam de Carlo? What are the charges? And again, the federal government, you see that after delivering that unanimous judgment, within 48 hours, the three judges were transferred out of Abuja, punitively. And we're asking, are we in democracy? And so when the senators rejected the motion, of course, some of them are lawyers, and they know that motion has no force of law. I had expected the senator to say, look, our colleagues from Southeast, You've demonstrated patriotism. We should go beyond motion and compare Mr. President to obey the law, but obey the court order. Federal government is supposed to obey the court order by releasing the Nam de Kalu before appealing, as they insisted that ASU should do. I belong to ASU, 
And I know that federal government insisted that we should obey. And we obeyed. And so why hasn't federal government to pay this? And in any way, what are the charges against Mr. Namde Kahlo at the Supreme Court? So government is violating laws with impunity. The rule of law doesn't seem to exist again in Nigeria. It's like we here is lawless state. So, so is, is this the, is this the uh, you know... Elders approach. Yes. Yes. Is, Thank is, you so is, much. Is this, is this Igbo elders elders, No, no, no. no. Igbo or your, elders... Or your, or no, 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 personal no, no, no. Igbo, to this. Igbo, we've discussed this severally. We've reached out to the media. So I, I, I'm not saying that Igbo elders, Igbo elders didn't meet on this. But several Igbo elders have expressed this. Led by our chairman, His Excellency Dr. Chukwemeke Zife, um, uh, Chief SNO Keke, and others, even the new president general for Hannes and the Chief Emmanuel Iwanyamu. We have maintained the same thing, release Mr. Namde Kali. He has not committed any offense. That, that, that's on one hand. Yes. But on the other hand, I'm coming to Ch uh, Chikam Nayon now. Yes. On the other hand, because we seem to have uh, another problem, and uh, it has to do with the sit at home. Yes. Uh, a part of Nigeria uh, in crisis also mean that the entire country is in crisis. What I southeast, mm -hmm. if the southeast economy is going down because of sit at home yes. or some other crimes and criminality, then Nigerians should be worried. Let us in on what you say you did while in government to the extent that, well, for eight years. Uh, there was peace and calm in the Abia state. Uh, yeah, let's yeah. see the Abia example. The Abia example is simple. You know, Governor Kezi Bazo at a point was unanimously given the award of the best governor in security in the southeast. The entire diaspora. By, by, by who? By the Telegraph newspaper, oh. you know, an independent body. And Abike Dabere, the, the lady in charge of the diaspora, took the whole of Igbo's from all over the world to Abba for a convention just last year because that was the safest place anybody could go. Everybody from everywhere in the world came to Abba. What did Ibaz do, do, do right? You see, because you see, a governor is a prototype of a president. And you have to understand the microcosm before you can apply it on the macrocosm. First of all, you cannot fight insecurity without a buy-in of the citizens. You cannot legislate an end to the sit at home. You cannot use the gun and the bullet to stop sit at home. You have to talk to the mind of the people. There must be a, a, a meeting. You cannot at any time do anything about insecurity until there is a buy-in, until the citizens themselves take ownership of their own security, until there is that connect. As long as there is apathy, as long as the people do not believe in the people in government, as long as the senators come here in Abuja and blow their grammar and they could not go back to their villages, you have not solved the problem. So what is it that we can do to actually make sure that that detachment between the government and the government is, that, that bridge is actually broken so that people can come together? Because politicians must not come to a point where the people are afraid of them and people are more at home with non-state actors. What is it that we are doing wrong as a political class? But that's what's happening now. People, pe because people, people listen to non-state actors. People tend to listen to non I agree with you, 100%. People tend to listen to non-state actors. But in Abia, Governor Ibaz sat down with them. And he discussed with them, especially the youth. The youth of Nigeria are angry. And they are justifiably angry. You have to create jobs, massive, direct and indirect, job creation must be done. Whether it is in the southeast, on the southwest, on the northeast, or in the northwest, the youth must be employed. The youth must know that this country represents hope and prospects. That's number one. Number two, you must make local governments to work. Local governments in Nigeria are frustrated. In Abia, where I come from today, there are no local government executives. Either the transition committee or elected. Under Governor Bazu, we did local government election twice. Governor Bazu did that so that the young people going back to contest for councillor, going back to contest for chairman, going back to get involved, they feel a sense of belonging. So, so two, when you so, make so two when, key things here, sorry to yes, you I'm here. I'm coming to the third one because you see, if you don't 
employ I, the youths. I, I if know, you don't make the I, local I'll governments you, to I'll work. I'll let you go on the yes. third one. But again, quickly here, two things here. Job creation and local government administration. Are you saying after your governor left office, uh, these people who were once employed or engaged suddenly lost their jobs? In Abia, I just had, as, as I did today, 7,000 people have been sacked by the new government. You see, if you look at what is happening in Abia and in Kano, where there is a hostile takeover of government in terms of one party taking over from another party, you see there has been government of vendetta, government of reversal of gains, government of trying to prove that, oh, because you did not exercise your democratic franchise in our favor. 7,000 well, people sacked. 7,000 people sacked. And local government workers, as we speak, for two months in Abia State, local government workers have not been paid. They are undergoing what is called re-verification. In this time, when there are no petrols, when transport has gone up, when people are going through perilous times, somebody sits on their location. By the way, Abia State has gotten about 45 yeah, billion. Let's quickly and take the third it, one so that we The third one is that, you see, like I said, there must be massive employment. It, when we were there, the governor of Abia State created what we call the team as transport management corporation of Abia State. We created, uh, we created the uh, APSA, we created ASEPA, we created APUMA. All of these were deliberate, definite measures taken to engage, to have bring they, in the youth. all seized? And all of this have been dissolved. So when you see that, as at yesterday, I wish you can bring the video here. As at yesterday, two policemen were shot dead. Our brothers of the Nigerian police, accompanying a commissioner to Ariara Market, were shot dead. And there is riot at Omaha, not local government. There are riots all over the place because of what? Because when you do not ensure through succession, political or otherwise, that there is a continuity of the gains, not just for political experience. When you try to run a government of vendetta, what you end up doing is you dissolve all the gains that have been done. And like I said, like my brother equally said, you must engage the people. You see, I want to appeal to the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let us not be legalistic about insecurity in Nigeria. Let me, let there me is bring, nothing. Let, let, let me, me, let me, let me come in before you. you expatiate on that. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Professor Charles Wankeku, uh, uh, yes. quickly, I want you to expatiate on that because he's given about four key things here. Uh, mm -hmm. And this, again, this speaks to how politicians uh, can also contribute to peace yes. or otherwise. In this case, he said it's, uh, almost all the structures put in place to engage people have been stopped in Abia State. Now, how can politicians understand that there is, irrespective of the government uh, in office, uh, that the people uh, the, uh, are the paramount, you know, uh, essence rather, the, the essence why you're in government? Well, um, what my colleague said is news to me, so I, am, I don't have full details of that, but I want to believe that government is supposed to be a continuous process, okay? But at the same time, you know that the new administration you have there, uh, they had their campaign, they had their manifesto. I wouldn't know the details of what have been done and so forth. Is it possible that they are reassessing the whole thing or not. I wouldn't want to talk about but let me talk on the insecurity. Okay. Please, please now you find out that generally, according to Karl Marx, conflicts in every society are caused by the struggle between two major classes over the control of material resources. They have and they have not. And when and you know that they have often less than 5% of the state, they control over 90% of the resources. And you keep on having that constant struggle. And so, as he rightly pointed out, you have insecurity throughout the country. But that of the Southeast is an exceptional case because of massive deprivation over many years, marginalization, and complete exclusion of the people from governance. We are talking of a people. Southeast was part of uh, Eastern Region. Eastern Region between 1960 and 1965 was rated by the World Bank as the fastest growing economy in the world. 
9%. Fastest growing economy in the world. And so, and the Southeast is the center of that Eastern region. And today, we are having seat at home. You're having everything. You come to the national uh, here, you see that the people from the Southeast are marginalized. Our youths, our graduates are not recruited in the public service. That's why the existence of federal character as contained in Section 14, Subsection 3. You know, you know, Promotion, uh, our uh, people uh, excluded. Uh, you, Security you, you, agencies, our people excluded. And people and the youths are not happy. But, they believe that we are not doing anything. And that's why our elders, you know, you asked me before what we've been right. doing. We've been reaching out to them, pleading with them yeah. that we want peace. That they should give us time to talk with the federal government. We've been talking with the federal government, but it's like federal government doesn't want to listen. But that notwithstanding, we still have put our youth to exercise patience. We believe that perhaps the new administration may look into the case of Southeast. Here is, we are talking a place where... Quickly here before we wrap up yes. with uh, Chikam Nayo, what, what's the, what are the demands? First, the demand, they are uh, demanding. First, 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 you, you, you spoke yes, about Namdi Kano yes. release. Yes. Now you're talking about people being marginalized. Yes, you're yes. talking about joblessness. Yes. What do they want? The youth want to be included in whatever that is being done in Nigeria. Now, our youth, you say federal character as contained in subsection 14, subsection 3. Okay, so that every session of Nigeria should be accommodated in whatever government does in order to give that session a sense of belonging. Let, let, yeah, let, in let, jam. Me, let me bring let me bring in the lawyer here so that we can close. Sorry no, to no, cut you here. Let me finish. finish. Yeah, yeah, let me ahead, finish. Land on this. So you find out that under that federal character, our people they score very high in jump, they are not given enough admission, they perform well in civil service job recruitment, they are not recruited because we want to reflect other places. But when it comes to politics, we exclude it. And so you see that the implementation of federal character is selective and at the detriment of people of Southeast. And the youth are crying. Barry uh, Chikam, uh, your plethora of uh, demands uh, to the extent that uh, uh, it could get so foggy uh, because you really no. can't. Put, so in a minute, uh, let no, us in let on. Let me comment uh, quickly. President Tinubu on one ground. He has brought in a very holistic approach. The South is included, at least in the service chiefs that have been appointed. That's a kudo, and that's a positive sign that President Tinubu wants an all-inclusive uh, situation. South is now included, at least in the security apparatus of the country. Two, President Tinubu has also, you know, a, a, an obligation, a responsibility to continue to go via the political solution. Because you cannot be legalistic about peace. The Abia example has initiated and implemented for, by Governor Kezi Bazo for eight years that the works should be implemented. One, massive employment. I heard when the labor chief was speaking, I need him to also say that we need massive employment. The youth of Nigeria need to have jobs, good paying jobs. We need local government administration. Security, every security problem is local. So you must have functional local governments for the grassroots to take ownership of their own security challenges. Three, there must be a, 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 an engagement of the people because it's the information hunting in Abia State. When we did our own Ebubagu, we did not come out with people with guns and boots. We engaged the hunters, the farmers. We gave them telephones. We made sure there was an engagement of the grassroots. Three, and most importantly, yeah. the security agencies must work in synergy. So, you see, when you implement all of this, which is what we, the template that has worked in Abia State and made us the most peaceful state in Nigeria for eight years, if we take it to the global arena, the Nigerian arena, and employ the youths, make the local governments work, engage uh, 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 the, the people and let them take ownership of their own security and ensure that the security agencies work in synergy. Nigeria will be good. But finally, before I go, Quickly. let me make it very, uh, very open that, <coughs> you see, just like my prof here said, government is a continuum. You see, whenever there is a change of government, whether it is by the same party or another party, there should be a certain you know, sensitivity to what has worked. It's not going to be a blanket, you know, dissolution of whatever 
is uh, available. Is, that's so a fine place. You the, have to the, look the, at what worked and uh, what can be built yes, on what. Not just uh, you yes. know for the purpose of yes. political experience, you uh, begin it, to it, demolish it's, all it's that. A, that it's your a, it's a good place for us to leave it for no. now. We'll start on the conversation. Trust me on uh, Arise Prime Time. I'd like to thank you, Professor Charles Wankeku, yes. and of course, uh, Barrister uh, Chikam Nayo. Many thanks for speaking with you both, and we do hope that the Southeast will come back to one boisterous. Uh, part of Nigeria. Well, that's it on this edition of Arise Prime Time. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. It's thanks for watching and goodbye.